Okay. <laughs> All right, so first podcast, um, we don't have a name for it yet. <laughs> Murder, risk, torture devices. Nope, that doesn't nope. work. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll figure it out later. So what, um, let's talk about how okay, we kind of... first of all, my name is Luna Stacy. Yes, and my, and my name is Lila Wood. I don't want to say my full name. I'm Luna. You already said your full name, sweetie. We'll have to edit that out. Nope. Fuck! Say- <laughs> Can we just elect cursing on this podcast now say that it's okay yeah yeah cursing's fine like fuck, fuck you um okay so so let's talk about kind of how we got into this topic like like i know that of you podcasts or no i know that you've been into murder for okay so first let's just like kind of set the stage Hi. luna is going to be talking about murder murder murderers and and murders and i'm going to be talking about medieval but also just all torture devices <laughs> Which so, is a category inside murder. Yeah. So um, I think we should kind of talk about how we kind of figured out that we liked this. And I remember what was happening. We were in Connecticut. Yep. It and, was Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm. And we, this Thanksgiving um, of 20, I guess it was... 2018. Was it 2018? No, it was 2017. Because it was before January. It was November. Before January, so it was 2017. So 2017, yeah, you're right. November, Thanksgiving, and... We were we were going for a woods walk, and I remember I had gotten into a fight with my parents a couple days before we were in Connecticut, because I brought up I was watching this like um, YouTube video, and I was like, oh yeah, this is really cool, and then I brought up like I think medieval torture devices are fascinating, and I and I said they're awesome, which I guess was the wrong word because I. I do that all the time. Yeah. I obviously don't condone the use of torture devices. I'm a very... I like, don't condone murder. Don't yeah. fucking murder people. Lock your fucking door <laughs> and don't murder. We're big fans of my favorite murder. It's um, huge. <laughs> and so, so, we were, so we were talking, and I remember I said, use the word awesome, which is, I feel like is a very relative term. I feel like... I feel like awesome could really it's be... It's hard not to use that word because yeah. you're so fascinated. You're so, it's you're it's so, like, really fascinating. It. And it's, exactly. like, exciting. And it's like, it's, like, when people watch horror movies. They don't watch them to be happy. Exactly. They think they're awesome, but, like, they're terrifying. Like, you don't want that to happen to you. But you also exactly. find this kind of, like... I just dropped my phone. Thanks, Lena. You also find this kind of, like, extreme, like, adrenaline rush and just kind of, like, watching them and, like, figuring it out. So... I was talking to my parents, and they were, like, really not down with my medieval torture device obsession, and they were really not, like, okay with it at all. Um, and then I remember bringing it up to Luna. I was like, well, I was talking to my parents the other day. We got into a fight because I said that medieval torture devices were, like, really cool, and they fascinated me. And she was like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's fine. I'm really fascinated with serial killers <laughs> and murderers. I was like, that's new. Murder in general, though. Like, yeah. I also like kidnappings. Mm-hmm. I am fascinated by kidnappings. Really just any type of crime that, like, involves getting people hurt fascinates me. Um, sorry. Continue. Which is not in Luna's character, by the way. That's, like, the last <laughs> thing you expect from her. <laughs> um, she is tiny in every aspect of the word. <laughs> Um, her driver's license says she's 4'11". It's not true. I'm 4'12". <laughs> That's just five, five feet, feet, sweetie. I'm five feet. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, and she, you know, she's very, like, kind and anxiety-ridden about, like, getting in trouble or doing anything bad. Also, murder. I have so much anxiety She has so much anxiety murdered. about getting murdered. She won't go outside if you're not, like, with her. Like, she's really very high-strung about People murder. shopping during the nighttime. Like, I have so yeah. many. Yeah. No. You're also, not I live that. in New York City, so it's like... Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, every, like on my favorite murder, they always talk about my hometown murder, and I'm like, I don't really have one because there's so much, like, there's random so murders. Much that go on. random murders in so big cities in New York. I mean, my hometown murder is just, like, from Connecticut, Newtown. Yeah, because that's, really that's where you live, yeah. <laughs> well, what, was there a murder there? Yeah, a man put a, his a, wife in a wood chipper. What the fuck? Yeah, at the lake we swim in. <laughs> that's so dis- what the fuck is wrong with so these people? Really um, okay, so I'm going to be talking about... <laughs> I'll explain how I got into murder. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to be talking about my favorite torture device. God, getting that out, that's so weird. Um, so, and then how I kind of got into it. So I, so I was watching, I forget what the name of the video was. I was. It was a couple years ago. I was watching 
the like a video online. I wish I if I find the video, I'll put the link in the description. I wish I remember the channel. Um, and they were talking about like their like the ten worst torture devices. And one guy was like making up torture devices and like putting real ones in there. And the other person had to guess like, are these real or are they the ones that the guy made up? And I was like, oh, dude, that's so awesome. Like, that's really fascinating. And I remember I went to the, like, I think it was the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, and they had, like, a little section on torture. And I just, like, as, like, a five- or six-year-old, just, like, stood there staring at the display, like, fascinated. Like, Jesus Christ, people actually fucking did that to other people? That's insane. Yep. Um, and it was, like, standard. Like, there were no, there were no like no, courts, like and you Pope put them in jail. Like arresting someone today. Yeah, it was like arresting someone, and the public came out and watched it. About especially the one that I'm going to talk about today, um, the public took joy in it. They would, it was like a spectacle, and there were literally torture devices, which I'm not ever going to talk about because they're not very fun. Um, this, it was like a cage that they hung from tall buildings and put somebody in, and like oh, on onlook, onlookers would like purposely. They would, like, buy rotten food from vendors who were there purposely for this thing that was happening. And they would throw it at them, like, rotten tomatoes. Shit. Like, That's intense. Like, with the people that were hanging in cages. Ah! <laughs> like, really intense. And it was, like, it was, like, fucking movie night in the medieval oh ages. It was oh, my God. <laughs> so. So awful. So, yeah. I remember it just, it's kind of always just something that's fascinated me, and I got more into it recently, and um, I have a favorite. Um, and it's probably actually the most famous torture device just because it's, like, there's a lot of, like, they're very easy to make. I don't know why you would ever make one. Um, but they're really easy. They're simple. And we use the <laughs> design of this torture device in real life. Um, That'll be exciting. It's literally this. It's literally the same fucking design, just without the spikes on the top of it. <laughs> it's the only difference, and it's used in everyday life. So, uh, do you want to talk about how you got into murders sure. and murderers? Okay, so I have had, like you were saying, Ripley's um, Museum, like when you were five or six. Oh, sorry. Um, so I've had weird interest, I think, in murders since I was really young. I remember my grandma gave me a book of like wonders of the world and there's a whole like dark history there's a theme. fucking queen ant on the floor and my dad just told me that Ew. one time one bit him <laughs> it's gonna oh that's intense oh no. no fuck no fuck fuck oh my god i'm gonna kill myself well it's a bra <laughs> Did I kill she it? just fucking killed the ant with a bra where is i don't it? know if i killed it where is it oh shit look at that there's a really gross, mauled up, it's like, dead. curled up queen ant slash maybe carpenter ant on the floor. And I feel really bad killing it, but it also bit my dad. And he just killed one, so apparently we're, like, infested because I've seen three in the last week. I've seen ants literally everywhere in your house. Well, we have normal standard ants because, like... Like, so do we, even in New cause, York. Yeah, because we cook a lot. My mom's a caterer. But we don't have ants. Those are huge. Those are, like, the fucking size of a wasp. Jesus Christ, that was very scary. Also, um, the only time I've ever found a bra comforting. For the record. Yeah, but also your mom is never going to wear that bra again. Well, we just don't tell her. Unless you don't tell her. <laughs> We're not going to tell her. That's the gr dead aunt bra, mom. <laughs> don't tell her that. Um, okay. Okay. Yes. So um, you got that so, same murder. Yeah. Okay. So I've been fascinated with murder since, for a while. Um, the very first time I really embraced my fascination with murder was in the end of ninth grade. Uh, end of ninth grade. grade. Eighth grade. I mean, um, and I started watching Dexter, and I didn't mm -hmm. tell anyone. And one, and I, I watched it like all through that summer, um, probably until Christmas of ninth grade, and then I think I finished all of it. I've never seen it. I fucking love it. Is it? Should I watch it? Is it's it good? terrifying. It's terrifying. It's so weird and so so amazing. You should watch it. It's if you what are fascinated by that? murder. I was looking at that before. It's like a weird. <laughs> oh, it's a nipple cover. <laughs> it covers your nipple when you want to no, it's go raw. It's a fake flower. It's not a pasty. Oh, never mind. <laughs> there was a tan-colored, four-leaved fake flower on the floor. I thought it was a nipple cover. <laughs> We're so cover ADD right now. We're so distracted. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Okay. Um. Anyway, so I started watching Dexter, and then in like Chris around, I think it was like after Christmas of ninth grade. 
I told my mom, I was like, you know what's a really popular show in my school? Dexter. And <laughs> she's like, a lie. <laughs> Ew, that show is disgusting. And she made so much fun of it. And she said, I never want you to watch that. And so I didn't tell her for another year. <laughs> and then I, I found, and then I started reading, uh, watching Criminal. And then that blossomed into just like dark ass, emotionless. Yeah, haven't you seen all of American Horror Story or something? Of course I have, yes. You have? I've yeah, seen okay. all of it. I have not seen any of it. <laughs> it's not. This first season is so brilliant. I saw Sorry. the first, like, 10 or 15 minutes of the first episode, like, a long time ago, and I just didn't like it. But I, The first season like, I loved. To be fair, I didn't stop watching Wizards of Waverly Place until, like, a year <laughs> ago. So, like, <laughs> sophistication isn't really, like, in my repertoire. No, I loved the first season of American Horror Story, and then I continued watching it because the first season, like, shook me. And you were I was like, that was not great. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, really, the rest of it is terrible. Yeah. In um, my opinion. How did you, and then did, when did you discover okay. My Favorite Murder? So I the podcast. started, Go I watch it. it's very good. dived into, like, true con- crime stuff. But, like, the thing of it, okay, so I dived into all of this, like, intense podcast stuff, and I started telling it to my parents, like, all these murders that I had found about. And the first one that I heard about was Ted Bundy. Mm-hmm. And my mom, and I was like, hey, Mom, do you know what Ted Bundy is? And she's like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How did you hear of that name? And I was like, uh, I'm kind of into it. Oh, God, It's Luna. so fascinating. I have a Ted Bundy <laughs> fetish. <laughs> no. Don't judge me, Mom. That's not. <laughs> not how I'm trying to say that. <laughs> um, either way. So that happened, and then podcast suge- uh, like iTunes podcast suggested my favorite murder, mm-hmm. um, and I remember I remember like getting it suggested, and me like the first episode being like, holy shit, this is like amazing my, uh, dream. And the reason I love them so much is because every other murder po- like I listen to true crime podcast, true crime garage is actually amazing, but like um, cults and serial killers are two that are by the same people. And they're both all script and lore. I loved lore. I listened to a lot of them, and then I found my favorite murder and totally stopped. But lore and all of those, um, they're all scripted, so there's no emotion. So yeah. So it'll be like, and then you yep. cut off her throat. And then... Cut off her throat? Or cut into her? Cut into her throat. Cut into her throat. blood okay. dripped down. All <laughs> ants ate her face. And what? my favorite murder will be like... And then he cut up the throat. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy yeah. shit, that's intense. And it's not like you're <laughs> listening to it alone. You're not being, like, alone yeah. in that. Yeah, it is real reactions. Experience. And they're not, like. They're, they're amazing. N- they're amazing, but they're not also not, like, analytical. They're, like, very. Yeah, of course. They're, they're very, amazing. like, this is fucked up, but also we kind of love it. Exactly. Like, which, which is, is our attitude as yeah, well. Yeah, my attitude as well. Um, okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk about. <laughs> A torture device, which has multiple names. Um, it's called the Spanish Donkey. That's I know I've name. talked to you about this before. What? That's a fun name. Yeah. Or the Spanish Horse or whatever. And actually, it looks exactly the fucking same as a sawhorse. Do you know what a sawhorse is? No. Of course you don't. Here, I'll get a picture for you. Um, <laughs> and, and sawhorses are used today, and actually they were created after um, the Spanish Donkey. So they're... That's I need that. So they're like, they're descendants almost of the fucking torture device in the medieval what? I was saying I'll type it in to her phone. Oh. Um. So so nobody really knows the. Oh, that's a sawhorse. Of course I know what a sawhorse is. Yeah. For those of you who don't know who a sawhorse <laughs> is, because you're twelve and listening to this. That's who I am. <laughs> um, you're not twelve. No. Well, y- you are at heart I in your brain. I often have no fucking clue what they're talking about because it'll be like, uh, taxes. I, that's not a bad example. But <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so that's a sawhorse. Um, it's like the if you thing don't know what it is, parents, look at the fucking pictures online. Um, if you got to this podcast, you know how to work it. If you're on the subway and you you're cannot on the subway. look them up because you don't have unlimited data, and that's a whole lot of work because your phone is in your pocket, like in your coat pocket. It's one of those things that you're whenever your like parent or something is like building something or like cutting a piece of wood, they take like two. It looks like almost an A, um, like giant pieces of wood, and you oh like structure things, and you put the wood in between them, and they're two separate, and you normally have two of them, um, and it's like the thing that you place 
wood on or some okay, shit Thanks like for that, that. long-winded um, I thing. mansplained it, Lila. <laughs> Luna has completely mastered the art of mansplaining. I really have. To a completely ridiculous degree. Um, which degree, which is funny because... I don't know how you know about anything enough to mansplain it because you're not <laughs> the most no, I knowledge it's person. Just like a nicer way of saying you bullshit your way out of something. Oh, absolutely. I'm, it's um, just me being like, I know this <laughs> tiny piece of information. I'm just going to bullshit it all the way to the all. all okay, way. so yeah, so the Spanish donkey looked like a sawhorse. Um, or really, rather, the sawhorse looked like the Spanish donkey. Um, they, there's Because it was just like, so it was literally in medieval slash renaissance time. Um, they don't know. Obviously, it originated in 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 Spain um, and was made by Spanish people during the Spanish Inquisition, they think. Um, but they're not quite sure because they can't really tell. And there's no written accounts of it. Um, but basically, what it was was it was a sawhorse, except for some some version on on the top would have spikes, like metal spikes, mm-hmm. and they would it was. First, exclusively designed for women, um, for who are being tried for being um, usually witches. So it was like the Salem. It was like a little bit like the Salem witch trials. So, um, so basically, it was mainly people and women who they thought were guilty of witchcraft or heresy, and it was. Like, they would take, they would spread the woman's legs apart, and she would be naked. Um, or in a very, like, skimpy linen cloth, so that she would feel the thing all on her body. Um, and they would spread her legs, and they'd put her on top of it, and because of the shape of the horse, how it went out like an A, you couldn't really get off of it, because it got thicker as it went down, so you couldn't really, like, lean off of it. And they put a bunch of weights on your legs to weight you down, so it would be even harder to get off. Uh-huh. Um, and on the small ones, they would just put on a couple weights and you would be like, like three feet off the ground tops. Um, but there were really big ones that were like the towns. It was like literally using like a city bus. Like it was a like community Spanish horse and it was huge and it usually didn't have spikes on it cause it was so big. And it was like really high in the air and they would put multiple people on there at, at one time. And sometimes it would just be used to, like, fuck up women's vaginas. Oh, my God! <laughs> no! Like, fuck them up. Ah! Um, so that you couldn't, like, walk without pain for, like, ew, ew. a long time or the also, rest of your life. Yeah, you were... No. Because there wasn't really, like... Mo- there definitely wasn't modern medicine back then, and you couldn't really, like, but heal that shit. But what medicine could even fix that? Yeah. That's so fucked up! Why? Yeah, um, you look at this site has a picture of it on there. And that's a woman on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a doll. That's so yeah. That's much not a real than woman. An actual woman. And they tied the hands to the t- tied your hands to the front of it, so it was like you're holding the reins. And they tied your legs or put weights on them, and that was the early version. It was just like they put you on there for like five hours or like a day tops, just to like stretch, like make your legs maybe dislocate, make you lose some blood from the spikes, um, like. Fuck up your crotch, like do damage, ah! but like not to kill you because they didn't deem the like crimes punishable by death. And then eventually it turned into like a method to get you to like admit you had done a crime. Mm-hmm. And this was used into colonial times, by the way. That's so awful. Yeah, Holy for shit. like a really fucking long time, and and it was like used. Like, if people wouldn't admit a crime that they did, and they, like, they thought that they had known, instead of, like, putting them up and, like, using evidence like they do in modern courts today, they just put you on that fucking Spanish donkey and, like, ripped your body apart. Nope. 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 Um, and then eventually from there, it even turned into, they made them taller and bigger as they advanced as a society and as just, like, engineers in general. Built them into this fucking huge thing. And eventually they would have you so high that they could put a ton of weights on your legs. And they did it until one of the two things happened. Until your body literally split in two. Or until your no. legs... <laughs> or until your legs dislocated. Like at like your pelvis. Dislocated. And then they put more on there until your legs were literally ripped off your body and you died of blood loss. Holy shit. 
<laughs> Which they didn't do in Holy Colonial Times. Shit. <laughs> they didn't do that in Colonial Times. They just, like, fucked you up again. It, went, it, it, it advanced to, like, pulling people apart, limb, literally limb from limb. And then it went back in Colonial Times, went back to just being, like... Let's Ew. fuck someone's vagina up. Ew. And it, it, it did, it literally is, like, some weird sex torture thing now. Like, they do that in, like, really weird, like, sex dungeons. Don't um, do that. <laughs> no. I don't understand why pain, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm not no. kink shaming, but. <laughs> kink shaming pain, is my kink. Pain is such a intense kink. <laughs> yeah, I could not handle that. Like, hey, I want to cut you. Yeah, no, no thanks. I'm not into that. <laughs> no thanks. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and that's fucking creepy. Like, off. like, <laughs> oh. But isn't that sexy? Blood. No, it's not. <laughs> well, people have a blood kink. They're like, no! cut, cut, like, their names into other people's bodies and like lick the blood up, out. And the other person is like, what the fuck? Dude? No, the other person's now like, I'm hell like, yeah, I'm uh, fucking like turn on right now. I'm sorry, I'm not kink shaming. If that's what your thing is, then that's what your like, thing fucking is. go for it. It's but also, intense. please sterilize your shit. Yeah. And, like, have band-aids after. Um, But it is used in, like, it's, (laughs) band-aids are always necessary um, for everything at all times. You know, if you have a twitchy eye, band-aid that shit. That makes more sense than mine, which is just eating. (laughs) Eating band-aids? No, no. Absolutely. When you're eating. When you're eating? Fuck, just continue what you're saying. That makes more sense, when you're eating. I thought you were talking about eating band-aids, which, by the way, I'm totally down for if you want to have, like, an eating band-aid party sometime. No. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, so the Spanish donkey, um, and the design is used in sawhorses today. Uh, It was around for a fucking long time. And, like, no, nobody thought it was an issue. And ripping bodies apart was, like, a really common theme. Um, there's another one which I don't know much about. Maybe I'll elaborate on a different episode. But um, they literally fucking hung you by your legs, which was a common thing. Like, to hang you upside down and get the blood to rush to your head until you, like, say what you did. Uh-huh. Like, that was a common thing. He's like, that's terrible. painful enough. And, like, that's... I mean, yeah. That's, like, less extreme than, like, what most people would do. By accident to people... You do it. I don't. I don't. I don't. What the fuck? <laughs> you did it to me today. You oh, me off the I bed do. I do. Me off the bed. Yeah. Well, that's like it's like when you um. It made me so stressed. When you like when you like sit on your bed and you slowly like kind of like fall off until like you're like hanging halfway off of it and the blood rushes to your head or like you're on um you're hanging upside down from like the monkey bars or something. It's that same feeling of like all the blood rushing to your head. Um. And people, it's, that's a that was a common torture thing for lesser crimes like stealing or like panhandling, I don't know. Um, but then some fucking sick genius had the idea, like, what if, because all the blood is rushing to, like, the top half of their... I don't know if you can tell where I'm going with this. But what if, because all of the blood is rushing to the top... They cut off their boobs. What the fuck? Sorry. No. <laughs> That's really good. Because that makes me so intense. Like, just... When, well, I can talk about that, and that grossed me out. So that bad. I have, I have a torture Steve, device about that, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, they hung them from their legs; their legs spread wide. So basically, they were doing like a jumping jack open position, naked mm-hmm. again, because all these torture devices are naked. But it wasn't like sexual. Um, and they hung you from Thank your, you. <laughs> they, <For that. laughs> they hung you from your legs, and like in starfish position. And they waited, like, an hour or maybe two or three for all the blood to go, for, like, most of your blood to go to your top half. And they'd take a saw. No. And they'd put it between your legs. Mm. And they'd just fucking go mm. at it. Oh, my God. And saw your body. So half. And the thing God. was, why they hung you upside down instead of just sawing your body in half was because, like, until you hit, like like, the really important shit in, like, like, your organs and intestines and heart and whatever, before you hit all that shit, you would just be sawing through, like, pelvis bone. And, like, you, it would hurt a lot. Fucking hell, yeah, it would hurt. But it wouldn't kill you until you got a considerable far enough through your body. And normally you would die if you got, like, that foot between, like, your pelvis where it ends and, like, your where your stomachs and stuff starts. Like, there's a good foot there usually. You would normally die of blood loss, but because all the blood had run to your top half of your body, it's not really there, so you wouldn't die from blood loss. So basically, you would have to endure, like, a foot or two of them sawing your body in half for, like, a foot or two of your body um, before you died from blood loss or 
like spe- like needed organs failing because they were cut in half. <laughs> It's so awful. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not, like, the high point in medievalness. No. Although, some could say it is, because it was not a great time. <laughs> like, that was one of the lesser punishments. I have so many worse ones. There was ones where they would put, like, a bucket, or, like, like a bucket over, like, two or three rats on your stomach, trap them in the bucket, and then put heat on top of the bucket. So the rats would, like, have to get away from the heat, but they can't get out from the bucket. So what do they do? They chewed through your stomach. So you just have to sit there while rats chewed through your stomach. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my torture device story. Lena, you're into talking about Joe, oh. Joe, Joe someone? Joe Clark. Joe Clark? All right, take it away, dude. Wait, I need to get myself. <laughs> she has a note sheet because she's prepared. Oh, well, it's not anything. My actual thing is my phone. Oh, okay. Here, wait. Take the headphones. Okay, so you. you can hear yourself talking, and then come sit down here. Our hair. I'm sit here. All right. I'm sit there. We're changing seats, and I'm giving one of the headphones. Further. Ra- oh my God, my voice. <laughs> I can hear everything you're saying right now, Lila. I know. I had the headphones on just a second ago, Lou. Wow. <laughs> Take that, Ben. Sorry. All right. Uh, so Joe Clark. Okay. So I'm gonna mostly okay. So for the record, I got it, getting all most of the. I don't even know the paper. Um, <laughs> I'm getting most of my information from Murderpedia, which is an amazing site. <laughs> it's the murder version of Wikipedia. Oh yeah, I got most of my information that like I didn't already know off of um, TortureMuseum.net. So if you're in the mood for that some, that sounds sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> there is a torture museum in Amsterdam, and I want to go see it. But Luna's going to Amsterdam without me, so she can fuck I'm off. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm lying. I got literally all of my information from murderpedia.org. This is probably going to be a little bit longer than Lila's mm-hmm. because people died. <gasps> um, I would like to state for the record that people many people died, died about mine, um, as my entire purpose was just to make people die. Just specific, disclaimer. Specific people died. Um, also, no, people who died in Lila's thing are also very important. I'm yes, sorry. um, what if one of them was the future solver of the HPV crisis? She's saying that because I just got my HPV shot. Luna does not have cervical cancer, for the record. <laughs> Thank you, Lila. I just want to clarify that. If I kick this, does it? Oh, if you touch the mic, it makes noise. Cool. Um, I'd like to disclaim that that is obvious, as Sorry. that's what usually oh happens. <laughs> All right, I'm starting. All right, go, Lou. Okay, so, in an age... Okay, I'm not going <laughs> to... Um, Why are you tipping the microphone Because it's very uneven. Oh, oh shit. No, 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 it comes out. No, 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 no. It's not supposed to do that? No. <laughs> okay, fine. Luna's fucking with the microphone. <laughs> it's Lila's dad's microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. so weird. Okay. <laughs> Go. All right. Joe Clark. Who is Joe Clark? I'm just kidding. I know who that is. <laughs> okay. So, um, this was on 48 Hours. And probably... Do you hear music? I hear some drunk guy screaming. It's picking up on the mic. It's not anymore, right? No. No, not anymore. Okay, fine. I'm stopping. So... Um, this is also when I survived, which is, by the way, one, the most, the most amazing. Lila. <laughs> Lila. Now is not the time. Why? Stop. We're going to get, no. Just, we don't have the rights to this song. Lila. No. That was so unnecessary. I just got really... <laughs> Not okay. Not okay. Um, I don't understand why you're not continuing with your Joe Clark story. Uh, please continue. Okay, let's go. So, this is when I survived, which, by the way, is the most amazing show that Karen killed Gerber from my favorite... Stop touching my your phone. Your phone's gonna fucking turn off because it's on low power mode, you imbecile. What's it not? What are you All fucking talking right, Well, then you need to fucking you adjust liar. your preferences because your phone just went dark after <laughs> two seconds of not touching it. I would just like to state that Luna's phone severely pisses me off in every way, shape, and form. It's like an iPhone 4. We're rambling! Was that loud? I can't tell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry. Oh, it really was. It was that's really <laughs> intense. I'm so sorry to your ears. All right, we're, we have to stop. Okay. So, 
Um, this is on, I already said that. Okay, so, <laughs> we are going to go to Baraboo, Wisconsin, in the year 1994 slash 1995. Where were you during that time, Lila? I was uh, in my dad's... Uh, uh, Don't fucking <laughs> say that. I regret that question all the way. Yeah, I was in my dad's penis. Fuck off, Lila. <laughs> uh, and in my mother's uterus, uh, brewing and waiting to be sexed. Thank you. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, there are multiple people screaming outside of our okay, window. Okay, I'm making sure I'm not hearing ghosts. <laughs> uh, ghosts are not real, for the record. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. So... Um, this is about Joe Clark. I already said all of this. In, on July 4th, 1990, I need the paper. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you threw that away. <laughs> I regret dropping that in all my life. Okay, so 14-year-old Chris Steiner, so this is about Joe Clark. Um, this is July 4th, 1994. Um, 14-year-old Chris Steiner, or Steiner, is kidnapped from an outdoor party at his parents' house. Um, Steiner, it was very obvious that, so basically there was a party going on, um, the parents realized that their son was missing a little bit later, uh, they called the police, uh, police came home and were like, oh, it's definitely been a kidnapping because the screen to his bedroom window had been sliced open, the patio door was, like, forced open, and there were muddy footprints all over the house, um, that the parents obviously did not create, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, um, anyways, uh, so despite, like, police officers, like, attempt to find Chris Steiner, which I think they actually did a, a pretty good job. They don't go really that much into detail, but, uh, anyways, they found Steiner's body, um, dead six days later, draped over a tree. Um, there are no traumatic injuries, but the cause of death was drowning. So, that was the, a very, very small, like, it's not common in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Anyway, so, um, okay, so now we go on to Thaddeus Phillips. He goes by Shaf, nope, Thad for short. Um, so he woke that night and felt himself being picked up from the living room couch and carried across the house. He thought it was his parents carrying him out the, carrying to his bedroom because he had fallen asleep, um... Uh, like, on the couch. It was, like, the middle of summer. He had fallen asleep watching TV on the couch. So he thought it was just his Mm -hmm. parents picking him up until the per... Oh, actually, no, because the person brought him outside. He was super tired. Brought him outside. The person who was Joe Clark, for the record. Um, Joe Clark brings Thaddeus outside, um, stands Thaddeus up, and is like, come run, like, run, and both of them take off running. Thaddeus was not running very fast, and he was super tired, and he had no idea what was going on, but, like, wasn't resisting that much. I feel like that's something Porter would do. <laughs> Porter's <laughs> Don't brother. Don't make me stressed out. Um. <laughs> Porter is Luna's brother, and I feel like that's just something he would do where he's just tired and he just starts running. It is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Thaddeus takes off running with this guy that he's never met before, but he doesn't realize it because it's the middle of summer, it's like whisk. It's like 1995. He's like not. I don't know. It's like different times. He was he was super tired as well. It was in the middle of the night. Please tell me that he doesn't die. This kid. No, he doesn't. Okay, good. This kid is awesome. <laughs> um, Joe Clark is not though. He's also Joe Clark is 17 when he does this. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Seven fucking teen. What the fuck? Dude? <sighs> Thaddeus He's... was 14, I think. Oh my god. Yeah. That's fucked up, dude. Okay. That's one year older than us. 17. Yeah. Holy shit. Can you imagine you doing that in like a... That's fucked up. That's so not No, normal. that's so awful. Holy shit. That's like shit. the worst thing. Jesus Christ. That's awful. Anyways, so... Um, Joe Clark and when he told Phillips to run with him, the groggy and confused boy agreed. Not until he arrived... Uh, not until both of them arrived at this like ramshackled shed in the middle of nowhere, they had run for... I think it was two miles. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, just one mile. Either way, that's a lot. Yeah, I cannot... I run a mile in, like, what, like, 15 minutes last time I had a PE exam thing. That's when Thad Thad realized that he was in trouble. Um, So Clark introduced himself by his first name and then forced Phillips into his upstairs bedroom, tossed... um, Tossed him on the soiled bed. I don't know what that means. 
That means that there was, like... Poop on it? Blood or, like... Oh, shit. Or, like, pee or vomit, some sort of bodily fluid on, That's on the bed. Okay, so... Okay, so he brings Phillips into his upstairs bedroom, tossed him on the soiled bed, and proceeded to vigorously twist and turn one of Phillips' ankles until it snapped oh, and Jesus splintered. Christ. Like, that's like me taking your foot and just turning it until it snaps. I that's have a so thing with awful. bones and them breaking, and especially feet and them breaking. I have, it's like a sprained knee that's like chronic, and I would literally rather die than have that happen to me. Like, I would like have just wanted him to murder me so then. So intense. Ah, uh, that's not it. Um, and turned one of Philip's ankles until it snapped and splintered. Immediately showing his fighting spirit, Phillips managed to free himself from Car- Clark's grasp and limp his way downstairs where his abductor caught up and threw him onto the couch. Oh, Jesus. No doubt... Angered, Clark pushed Philip's leg upward toward the boy's oh, own head and leaned until the thigh snapped. Ugh. That's awful. Ugh. Holy shit. Um, anyways, the abuse Fuck. continued into the night after dressing Philip's shattered leg in crude casts of socks and ace bandages. Clark left Dude, his victim alone. What fucked up person, like, breaks a, the, like, your ankle. fucking ankle and then your thigh bone. The thigh bone is so intense. Like, yeah. that's awful. They do that. Like, your femur. And then they're like, dude, bro, just, like, put some socks and fucking ace bandages on that. Fucking Joe Like, Clark. it's fine. You'll be okay. Like, Joe, fucking Joe Clark. What is wrong with him? I mean, obviously, there's multiple things wrong with him. But, like, mm-hmm. that's really fucking weird. That you would do so that and awful. then be like... He's Let 17, me help you. Though. He's 17. I wouldn't know how to yeah. do that to a bandit. Like a, I only know how oh. to do that because I have le- my own leg issues. But, like, I don't understand why you would break all that shit and then try to fix it. <laughs> I have no idea. Either way, probably because he didn't want Phillips to die because he's a total fucking idiot. Anyways, um, Isn't so, that the point of capturing them, though? Just to kill them? Not always. Mr. Clean didn't do that. He released people after 50 hours. Mr. Clean, like the like the soap no, commercial no, guy. No, much, 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 much. <laughs> He's a very intense murderer. He's one of my favorite murderers. Oh shit! Um, right. Either way, I'll probably get to that in another episode. Um. Anyway, so where am I? You made me lose my place. You. Bitch. Well, I right. didn't have a script, I love you. and <laughs> maybe you should uh, have prepared more. I did. I just need to find my place. Okay, the abuse continued into the night when, after dressing Phillips, shattered leg in crude cast of socks and ace bandages, um, Clark left his victim alone on the bed while he went out, apparently convinced that the boy was no longer a threat to escape with, due to the extent of his injuries. So, yeah. basically... Which is a plausible thing. I wouldn't it, it, think somebody yeah. would run away either. But he underestimated Phillips. This is so... Okay. <laughs> um, the gusty youngster, <laughs> what the fuck? Drag, so he, he goes back upstairs, he drags himself downstairs, down the stairwell, making it into the kitchen, when Clark, Joe mm-hmm. Clark, and another random girl, probably from his high school, mm-hmm. show up at the house. Um, and a girl sat, arrived, arrived and sat down on the couch, unaware that he had, he lay, unaware that he lay silent in the next room. Unfortunately, when Clark's friend left, the sadistic youth discovered Phillips lying in the kitchen and after re- recovering from surprise, dragged him upstairs yet again to continue the brutal, brutal punishment and for the first time threatening to kill, though that was certain, certainly the ultimate intention all along. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so one day later, on the evening of July 30th, so now... Thad has been with Joe Clark for a full day. 24, yeah. 24 hours, that makes more sense. Yeah. Um, Clark again leaves the house, but was taking no chances of Phillips, and he locks Phillips in the closet. And okay. so Phillips is, so Thad, I like to call them by their first names, because they're, you know, it's a human being. Yeah. Um, makes whereas personal. the murderer is less of a human yeah. being, that's why I call him Clark, even though his first name is Joe. I would like to say that I always feel bad for murderers, because I feel like they no. they're obviously not. They don't deserve you to feel bad. But that's I, really intense, Luna. <laughs> what? Um, I, I mean, obviously, I'm like, that's a fucked up thing to do. But also, I feel like, first of all, I do not agree with death row at all. No, Like, I don't absolutely either. not. No. Um, but also, look, did you hear that story about that guy, the gay person? Just the other day, a gay person was sentenced to death row 
because the like judge or whatever thought that he would that life in prison in a man's penitentiary prison life in pen, man's penitentiary prison he would like it because he was gay so they sentenced him to death row because they, he would like it less than life in prison with all these men because mm-hmm. he's gay and if you're gay you automatically want to fuck every man you see that's, that's just awful. the rules like that's fucking terrible that's awful but like anyway I feel bad for murderers because like there's either something wrong in their head and like if they had gotten the proper medication and like and obviously not always but if they had gotten the proper like medication and therapy and love when they were like a kid and growing up and they were in a safe environment, then I feel like they wouldn't have turned out that the way they did. Okay. That's why I feel bad for murderers. Here's my thing. Because I, I totally get what you're saying. But my thing is that more than 50% of the time, people don't end up. People have much worse. Oprah was molested by her uncle, had a worse childhood than Ted Bundy, I think. And she came yeah. out as Oprah. So but obviously there's nothing wrong in Oprah's Oprah. head like that. Oh, true, true, true. But like if somebody with schizophrenia has a good like a relatively good childhood but then somebody with no mental problems has like a terrible childhood like oprah did chances are the person with schizophrenia is still going to come out like a more fucked up human being that's true but so like, i feel like a lot so of murderers many, so many people who have schizophrenia and have like all these mental disorders and also on top of that have a horrible childhood don't end up being a murderer and then well i think they're probably like in care like they're probably in a like in a mental ward. Most well, of them. Well, every single person that doesn't get or care is a murderer. There no, but so I'm I'm saying I'm care. saying there's always so many factors. Yeah. And everybody's like that you might not know about, and it's not not only schizophrenia. It's just like I like DID, like so many mental things they could have, so many problems they could have, so many inner battles they could have, and like I just feel like, and I'm obviously not all of them, but I feel like most of them, or at least half of them. Like, could have been an okay human being or if they had gotten the right care. And I'm not saying people like Ted Bundy are going to be fucking, like, Mm -hmm. St. Michael. I'm just saying, like, I feel like if they had gotten the right care and protection as a kid, uh, a lot of them would have turned out very different. No, yeah. So I always feel bad for them in a sense. For the ones that we know that have had a hard childhood and weren't loved or abused or, like, raped as kids. I, like, yeah. I feel so bad for those people because, like, I just wish that I, like, I personally and people could personally help them. could yeah, have helped them course. before they had gotten that far and they'd done those things to people. Of course, of course. I just, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. I just feel like once you hurt someone else, once you make the decision to murder 12 people or break someone's ankle and keep them captive for 20, like, yeah, forty eight hours. No, that's a little far. That's when you. I just always. Lo- that's when I lose my sympathy for them. Yeah, I think I think it's like, it's like you did a terribly fucked up thing, but also people did a terribly fucked up thing to you. And obviously, this is really different. Mm-hmm. But like, when you're a bully, it's usually because you've been bullied yeah. in some other way. And I feel like it's obviously not when you're a murderer. It's because you've been murdered. Because that makes no fucking sense. Yeah. But like, I feel like no murderer. I, like, I feel like every murderer who, and, and I'm not talking about, like, murders of, like, passion, where, like, oh, he cheated on me, so I'm going to murder him. I'm not talking about crimes of passion. I'm talking about, like, serial killers who are fucked up in the brain. Yeah. I feel, like, four or five percent bad for them, because, like, I just wish that they, that they had a different yeah, way I absolutely, of, I see what you're saying, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, it gets so intense because, like, there are so many different diseases that cause you to, like, um, yeah. Munchausen's by proxy causes mothers to abuse their children, but it's because they have this, like, oh, fucked up illness. Yeah. And it's so intense, and I'm like, well, then you don't deserve, you don't deserve your thing because you had a fine childhood. It's just that you want sympathy from other people. Yeah. Like, that, I mean, Munchausen's by proxy is, like, super fascinating, but, um, there are so many diseases, like, every single one is different. Like, um, the Greyhound bus murderer Mm -hmm. killed a guy while he was on a greyhound bus in the middle of nowhere they had to he then he they had to get out of the bus like everyone got out of the bus barricade him in the bus and then called 911 and he was like eating the person's tongue and like cutting off they cut he cut off the guy's head that he'd killed and it was really awful and everyone was just staring at like holy shit we're watching someone get devoured yeah um and then he goes on medication a few months later and is like oh, my God, what did I do? Yeah. And that made me so sad. I was like, holy shit, if you had just, like... Yeah. Someone had just caught it. And, like, if you had had therapy or whatever. I feel like everyone should be in therapy. Everyone needs therapy. Yeah. 
You all need fucking therapy. All of you get yourself into fucking therapy immediately. And, yeah. like, get yourself on some synthetic smiles. For people who don't look, that's just antidepressants. Um, we're going to get back to Luna's story soon. But um, I feel like everyone should have therapy. Like, even if you don't have any issues, like, it's always good to just have someone to talk to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And they say the same thing in my favorite murder. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so... And lock your fucking door. Da, da, da. <laughs> Okay, so Thad is locked into a closet, like fully locked into a closet by Clark, um, and Clark leaves the house again. Uh, I'll okay, so yeah, yeah, Clark leaves the house again. Thad is in this dark closet. He cannot see anything because there's no windows or anything. Also, both of his legs are injured in some way, and also much more than just the ankle and the thigh. Yeah. He had been like beaten the shit out of. Um, which is so awful. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Thad, like the amazing person he is, um, finds a huge old guitar and bashes the door down oh, with this shit. guitar. He crawls downstairs. I think it took him, like, two hours just to get downstairs. Drags, like, drags himself into the kitchen and finds a phone Picks up the phone and calls 911. This is after being in um, there for a little bit over 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Also, his entire, like, he, he, I don't think he can walk anymore. Because um, uh, he was so fucked up. I think the guy, uh, Clark, Clark tried to break his spine. Oh, Jesus. Did not succeed, but broke both of his pelvis bones. Oh, oh my God. God. Anyway, so, um... Uh, so, Thad brings himself into the kitchen, gets a, like, on the, like, gets a, finds a phone, and it was, like, when, like, the, um, phone was a connect, like, there wasn't any cell phones, yeah. like, the cord is, like, a connected to the boxy thing, um, and, like, pulls on the cord until the phone comes out of the receiver, uh, and then dials 911, and 911 got there within, like, a few minutes, I think, I think within, like, 20 minutes, um, and find Joe Clark. Um, officers quickly responded to Clark's house and rescued Phillips. He had been held and captured for about 43 hours in total and had sustained horrible features to both legs, which were, which would require several surgeries over the years and result in, per, in a permanent limp. Like, There's another fucking ant on the bed. I'm sorry. Are we infested or some shit? What the hell? Why do they have to have wing type things? Cause they're I think queen ants slash maybe carpenter ants. Um, please get her off the bed. I don't want to make it suffer. I know. Um, keep talking. I'm killing this ant. Okay, so um, I'm a murderer too. Put me on the podcast. No, I'm not a murderer. Don't say that. <laughs> Um, anyways, so he'd been held in capture for 43 hours, I already said that, uh, okay, resulting in a permanent limp. Soon afterward, Clark was arrested, and Phillips told officers that Clark had spoken of brutalizing two other boys, one whose name was Chris, Mm -hmm. like the first story, Chris Steiner, um, Chris, and the other he can't recall to this day. A subsequent search of the, of Clark's home recovered, uncovered Google it ghoulish list of boys' names, some of which were listed under the heading The Leg Thing. Thankfully, Phillips bravely ensued, ensured that none of the potential victims would experience the torture that um, he and Steiner did. Yeah. Okay, so, Clark was first tried in the Phillips attack and entered a plea of no contest uh, to attempt homicide and other charges, so um, he was sentenced. He did not win. Basically, he said, oh yeah, so he was sentenced to a hundred years in prison term, but claims to have no recollection of Thad Phillips' abduction and torture. That's the Steiner- bullshit. Yeah, obviously. Um, anyways, the Steiner case was a different story, and Clark elected to plead not guilty through an assumption of Steiner's body had revealed taut and sustained injuries to his ankles that were identical to those of Phillips. Oh yeah, he totally did. It. Um, Clark's parents' testimony. That their son was home... Okay, so Clark's parents come on stage and testimony that their son was ho- a home... 
was home asleep in his room on the night of the killing and did not hold water in the face of other witnesses that claimed Clark regularly snuck out of the house via an upstairs window. So, like, all the neighbors are like, fuck off, you idiot parents. He snuck out of the upstairs window literally every night. Mm -hmm. And the parents are like, well, I mean, they're defending their son. Yeah. Um, I can't. I mean, I think that it's kind of amazing. I love it when, like, a girlfriend or a boyfriend is mm-hmm. to their partner, like, my partner did something bad. I love yeah. them, but I can't. Yeah. And I also think, like, it's, I don't know, I think that you have to, like, make a line and, like, yeah. not, like, stop defending someone at some point when yeah. they've hurt and killed other people. Also, Joe Clark's life was not that bad at all. Yeah. He had no reason to kill anyone, and he was 17. Anyways, um, okay. Um, so Clark's testimony that the home, the son was home asleep in his room on the night of the killing did not hold water in the face of the other witness that claimed Clark regularly snuck out of the house via an upstairs window. Also, damning, damning a testimony by a former fellow, fellow juvenile detention inmate of Clark's who said Clark had admitted to, to her, oh God, had admitted to her that he had killed a boy and placed his body over a tree which is how Steiner's yeah. body was found. Um, all said it was obvious that Clark had murdered Steiner and on November 7th, 1997, was found guilty of intentional homicide and sentenced to life in prison, plus 50 years. Um, Clark maintains that his innocence to Chris Steiner's murder from a prison cell to this day. So, the death investigation. On July 4th, 1994, in Barrow, Wisconsin, Chris Steiner, this is about Chris Steiner, who was 14 years old, disappeared from his house. He was not the type to run away, and what happened to him was a episode of... Oh, yeah, yeah, it was in Cold, uh, cold Case Files, not 48 Hours. The Tortured Truth. Oh, no, it was also in uh, 48 Hours. Anyways, um, that is called The Tortured Truth. Indications that he had been kidnapped include a shoe impression outside his bedroom window and muddy tracks inside. Five days after he disappeared, his body was found caught on a tree of, on a bank in Wisconsin River. An autopsy um, was performed, and the case of death was a- attributed to drowning. But the manner of his death um, was an accident or otherwise, remaining undetermined. So, like, how he died. Mm-hmm. Um, one aspect of death investigation involves evaluating the cause or mechanism um, and manner of death. A cause of death is whatever made death occur, of what uh, is whatever death occurred, such as strangulation and the me- mechanism um, is what happened, psychology. So, like, oxygen depri- deprivation. The manner of death, according to the NH- NASH classification, places it on one-fourth categories, natural, accident, suicide, or homicide. Mm-hmm. So, those are the four things that you can... Like, when they find a dead body, they have to put it into one of those categories. Mm -hmm. Um, If it cannot be classified, such as the case with Chris Jenner, because they didn't know, then it's some 15 to 20 percent of deaths around the country occur in a manner that is undetermined. With no clear leads or ideas about what happened, the Steiner case went cold. No one in his family knew how Chris could have drowned, but since... It was not clearly a murder. The police did not look for a perpetrator. So, like, but also it's not a runaway because he drowned. Yeah. And it's, like, they don't know if he just, like, drowned or someone put him under the water or what happened. Like, held him under there, yeah. Yeah. Um, So a year passed, and another boy, Thad Phillips, was taken from his bed in the same town while he slept, but had had survived to tell the story. Um, Yeah, obviously. He woke up to find himself in Thad's astonishment... Joe grabbed and twisted one of his ankles until it broke. Though in agony, Thad still tried to escape, but Joe caught him. Brought him back. You already know all this information. Okay, so after the police rescued Thad, he told them that Joe had admitted to killing Chris Steiner. This came as a surprise since the the pathologist, there we go, um, who had examined Steiner at the time, had found no sign of an injury. Nevertheless, the case had been mysterious, and the body had never had been bloated from being in the water. Okay, I would like to say that if they found the body in a tree and he had drowned, how could they, how could they say yeah. anything other than homicide? Well, it was a tree, like, in the bank, so it was, like, halfway submerged. You know what I mean? That's still sketchy. It's still really sketchy. That's still sketchy. I think that's, that's still hella sketchy. That's pretty much all. Oh, um... 
Okay, so they also found two lists. Uh, oh, no. Get, uh, so they found, he, they found three lists. Their headings were Get to Now, Can't Wait, and The Leg Thing. Clark claimed to be innocent to Shiner's murder. His mother backed him up um, with an alibi. She said that if he had left home on the night Steiner was abducted, she would have known because they, had, they have passed through her bedroom. However, it was shown that she was a heavy sleeper and that he had managed to slip by her before. Thus, Joe Clark had no alibi. A jury found him guilty of Chris Steiner's murder, and this case was finally closed with a conviction. So, he killed Chris Steiner, and he abducted and Thad. Slash Lewis. maybe tried to kill him in the future if he had been Probably, with him Probably, I'm sure it was the intention. As Thad it was six us. days when they found the guy dead, so he's probably just not with him long enough. Yeah. It seems like Joe just was, like, into, like, torturing and then killing. Yeah. Slash abducting and then torturing if he had to, if they struggled, and then killing them. Yeah. Which is severely fucked up. Yeah, the whole thing is just fucked upness. It's so fucked up. Yeah. Well, that's my murder. Um, that was the murder of Joe Clark. Uh, I think it's season five, episode three, uh, that f- uh, Thad Phillips. The I Survived. Yeah, the, the I Survived, Thad Phillips. And you can, like, watch him tell the story, and it's... Dude, we should totally watch that. We should. We should. I've never seen any episodes of I Survived. I bought... You have to buy them on Amazon. It's fine. Um, I bought the fifth season just because I wanted well, to watch You can watch also just, like, Norway illegally Massacre. watch them online. Yeah, you like search it and you can find all like daily motion and shit. Yeah. Either way. Um so yeah, that's the fucked upness of Joe Clark. Okay. What's our motto thing? Oh. Uh, we can't say lock your fucking door. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. Nope. Nope. You can't say nope. that either. <laughs> Stay sexy and cannot get mur- and, and and don't get murdered is um I hear murder. My favorite murder and also already a tagline. Yeah. So um can't use it. For the record uh, we're not trying to upstage my favorite murder. Nobody could. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. We're just, like, doing our thing. Uh, uh, imitation uh, is the sincerest form of flattery. Also, this is very different because I talk about torture devices. Yeah. And we're 16. Yeah, we're also not. We're <laughs> also under 18. Um, okay, so either way, just wanted to, like, to say that. We're not upstaging my favorite murder. I have so much respect for those ladies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, Georgia and Karen forever. Like, amount. Um, Georgia Karen, um, uh, Georgia Karen, Georgia Hardstock and Karen Kildare are mm, honestly, I like, I like Heroes, them. amazing. David they Bowie, my heroes. Karen, and Georgia. Are my three heroes. The Holy mm-hmm. Trinity. Yep. <laughs> David mm-hmm. Bowie, Georgia Hardstock, Karen Kildare. I honestly, I know why I idolize them. So, and so does Lila. Yeah. Um, so we are not. I'm not, they're they're gods. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Also, go check out the podcast if you haven't. Um, We love them. Brilliant. Um, Start with My First Dis Murder. It's so good. It's the first episode. Amazing. Watch all of the mini-sodes and all of the normal episodes. They're so good. They have cats. And Um, it's, well, Georgia has cats. Mimi. Dot. Dot. And then Elvis. Is that the name? Elvis. Elvis is a cross-eyed Siamese cat. (laughs) Yep. And Karen has two dogs. Mm Mm-hmm. Named George and Frank. George is a girl. And you can check out, I'm not going to tell Luna's social media because Luna does not like nope. that. <laughs> but my social media is at unidentified.mermaid on uh, Instagram. And I'm not telling you my Snapchat because I have like four Snapchat points. <laughs> well, I guess I'll say my social media because it's you have to request it's, it. It's to private. Me, you have to request so, it. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, no Luna doesn't remember because it it's a bunch of underscores <laughs> in her letters. It's like Luna underscore Rufy or something like that. Yeah. If you just like search, if you if you just my account is not private. So if you search under like Luna under the people that I follow or follow me, um, I got this. It'll be on there. Luna's gonna look it up. Um, what's our tagline, Lou? Holy shit, that's a lot of pressure. Is that what you click? Where do I you, click? you click that again? No, click that again. This. this? Yeah. There we go. Luna underscore Rufy. Yeah, I was L-U-N-A. right. U N A. And you can figure out the rest of it, because I don't want to say it. R-U-T-H-Y. Thanks, Lila. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's 102 followers. I have 500, for the record. Um, okay. So, there's that. So, our tagline is... Our tagline is, is... Pianos and mics. What? I don't know. <laughs> um, Power source. Please don't kill me. Uh, anxiety... Dick equals weed. What the fuck? Oh, No. I said that. Yeah, first. that's <laughs> Dick Eagles Weed is Luna's thing. Power Source is our thing together. Maybe we should just say Power no, Source. No, it has to make sense. 
Um, don't be an idiot. And go to therapy. <laughs> don't be an idiot and go to therapy. Yep. That's it. That has nothing to do with medieval torture devices. Go to fucking therapy. Yes, it does. <laughs> you know what? We'll figure it out later. So we, we fuck. Won't okay, for now it's like just that. fucking go to therapy. Um, it's terrible. We'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out. Lock also, your fucking door. The name of this podcast will also have to be. Well, well we like, we'll put it up in the description. Um, right now we're currently both messes, and it is what time is it though? My phone is all the way over there. Where's your phone? Also almost at 2,000 2, bars of uh, noise. <laughs> Garage man is like, what the fuck are you guys doing? 2,000 bars. This too long. <laughs> it's 10, 11 at night. We're going to go watch Grease on a movie projector and have some dinner. Um, the end. Um, Lock your fucking door. Stay sexy. Don't get it. murdered. Both <laughs> of those are from My Favorite Murder. I Like, My Favorite Murder fans that listen to this, which I'm sure no one's ever going to listen to this. <laughs> For the record, I love my favorite murder with all my heart. I'm so not upstaging them at all. It's impossible to do that. Yeah. They're so much better than us. Like, don't even mention our names to them, please. Because they're amazing. Aluna's going to go see them live. In October. October 10th! <laughs> all right. Um, I'm gonna die. Uh, don't die. Be like Georgia. No, that doesn't work. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. No! That's my favorite murder. Bye.